In Pacific studies, as well as general conversations about the Pacific, the term Austronesian is often used. But what does this term actually mean? Guahu Sipulin, and in this video, we will explore the term Austronesian from its linguistic geography, academic developments, homeland, and usage beyond its linguistic conception. The word Austronesian is derived from the Latin and Greek words Oster and Yesos, meaning South Islands. This word was invented by Austrian linguist and priest Wilhelm Schmidt in 1899 to be the linguistic replacement for the group of languages referred to as Malayo-Polynesian. As the name suggests, Austronesian languages are spoken primarily on islands in the Southern Hemisphere. By the 1970s, Austronesian was the accepted name for the language family that stretches about 12,500 miles or 20,000 kilometers from Madagascar to the west to Rapa Nui in the east. A language family is a group of related languages because they descend from a single parent language or common ancestral language. In the case of the Austronesian language family, the common ancestral language is referred to as Proto-Austronesian. Hence, all languages that trace their descent to Proto-Austronesian are parts of the Austronesian language family and therefore considered as Austronesian languages. Depending on the criteria used to differentiate between languages and dialects, it is currently estimated that there are between 1,000 and 1,500 Austronesian languages spoken by approximately 400 million people as of 2023. Austronesian-speaking communities constitute the majority, if not all, of the native populations in Madagascar, Indonesia, Malaysia, and the Philippines. Austronesian languages can also be found in Taiwan, which is believed to be the ancestral homeland of Proto-Austronesian, as well as in certain regions of southern Vietnam and Cambodia, the Mergue Archipelago off the coast of Burma, and Hainan Island in southern China. Moving further east, Austronesian languages are spoken in parts of near Oceania, including coastal areas of Papua New Guinea, New Britain, and New Ireland. Austronesian languages are spoken throughout the entirety of remote Oceania, which includes the rest of Melanesia, Micronesia, and Polynesia. This vast geographical distribution places the Austronesian language family as the second largest language family in the world in terms of geographic expanse, following only the Indo-European family. The majority of Austronesian languages are spoken by people who reside on islands, while only a limited number of Austronesian languages, such as Malay and the Chamic languages, are indigenous to mainland Asia. Much of this Austronesian world is located within 10 degrees of the equator, making their climates exclusively tropical or subtropical. Although the majority of Austronesian languages have only a small number of speakers, there are a few spoken by millions of people. For instance, Bahasa Indonesia, which is the national language of Indonesia, has around 200 million speakers as of 2023. The linguistic connection between the languages in Madagascar, Southeast Asia, and the Pacific Islands were recognized by European explorers throughout the 17th through 19th century. As early as 1603, Dutch explorer Cornelis de Houtman had already observed linguistic similarities between Malagasy and Malay. Dutch Orientalist Adrian Raylan was the first to publish a formal account of these connections in 1708, noting a common language that extended from Madagascar to Western Polynesia. The true geographical extent of this still unnamed language family was, however, only suspected. In 1778, German naturalist Johann Reinhold Forster, who accompanied James Cook on his second expedition, published the influential book Observations Made During a Voyage Around the World, which popularized the erroneous connection between race and language in the Pacific. He reduced Pacific Islanders into two racial categories based primarily on skin color, a fair-skinned race and a dark-skinned race. 
The fair-skinned race of Pacific Islanders inhabited much of modern-day Polynesia and were united by language and culture. In contrast, the darker-skinned race of Pacific Islanders inhabited parts of modern Melanesia and lacked a common language and culture. Forster acknowledged the similarities between Polynesian languages and Malay, but concluded that the languages of Melanesia were not related to Polynesian languages or Malay due to the dark skin of Melanesians. He suggested that the Polynesian origins could possibly be traced back to Southeast Asia, which explained the perceived racial differences between Polynesians and Melanesians. Later scholars, both William Marston and his Spanish contemporary, Lorenzo Hervas y Pandoro, affirmed the linguistic connection between various regions, including Madagascar, Malay Peninsula, Indonesia, Philippines, and the Pacific Islands, extending to Rapa Nui, but excluded Micronesia and Melanesia. This expansive group of related languages eventually became known as Malayo-Polynesian, a term first introduced by German linguist Franz Bopp in 1841. The term signified the linguistic connection between the Malay archipelago and the Polynesian islands. Unfortunately, the term Malayo-Polynesian ignored Micronesian languages and excluded all Melanesian languages due to the perceived racial differences between peoples of Melanesia and those considered Malayo-Polynesian speakers. However, as scholars delved deeper into the study of Melanesian languages, a growing body of evidence emerged, highlighting the linguistic relationship between certain Melanesian languages and the wider Malayo-Polynesian languages. Linguists such as George van der Gabelitz, Robert Henry Codrington, and Cindy Herbert Ray played crucial roles in this discovery. Their extensive research revealed that several Melanesian languages were indeed parts of the expansive Malayo-Polynesian language group, which spanned from Madagascar to East Polynesia. In 1885, Codrington introduced the term ocean languages as an alternative to Malayo-Polynesian, specifically to counter the exclusion of Melanesian languages. This term gained acceptance and Ray further developed the concept by defining the oceanic language family encompassing the diverse languages found in Indonesia, which consisted of Madagascar and Southeast Asia, Micronesia, Melanesia, and Polynesia. He sought to emphasize the linguistic connections across these regions. While recognition of linguistic similarities was clear, the exact nature of the relationship between the languages of these regions was still unclear. In 1899, Austrian linguist and priest Wilhelm Schmidt introduced the term Austronesian. Schmitz created the term for three reasons. First, as a replacement for the linguistic term Malayo-Polynesian, because linguistic research at the time was showing that the Malayo-Polynesian term was a misnomer. The research showed that Polynesian languages were of a lower order than Malay, rather than in the same linguistic order. The second reason was to match with the already established naming convention of the island groupings of Indonesian, Melanesian, Micronesian, and Polynesian. And the third and last reason was because, as the name suggests, the islands are located in the Oster, the south, specifically in the southeast of Asia. Schmidt shared the same motivations as Codrington and proposed the term as a substitute for Malayo-Polynesian, to avoid implying the exclusion of Melanesian and Micronesian languages. Schmidt's innovative terminology was embraced by scholars such as Johann Christoph Gerhard Jonker, Charles Otto Blagden, and particularly Otto Dempwo, who extensively utilized the term Austronesian in his early works and in his comprehensive three-volume work, Comparative Phonology of Austronesian Vocabularies. Depwolf's contribution to the field of Austronesian linguistics was instrumental in establishing the foundation for the modern comparative study of Austronesian languages. His groundbreaking work played a pivotal role in shaping key concepts, including the formulation of the Oceanic Hypothesis. Some scholars like Erwin Stressemann and Isidore Dian maintained a preference for the order terminology. 
However, by the 1970s, the term Austronesian had largely replaced Malayo-Polynesian. In the mid-1970s, R.F. Mills and Robert Bluce independently suggested that the term Malayo-Polynesian be used for all Austronesian languages spoken outside of Taiwan. This proposal gained traction among scholars in the field and has since been widely embraced. During this period, there was considerable debate about the Austronesian homeland and the spread of Austronesian languages across a widespread area of the world. The earliest attempts to determine the Proto-Austronesian homeland was in 1889 by Dutch linguist Hendrik Kern. He argued that the homeland of this huge language family was in the coastal zone stretching from Cambodia to the central part of Vietnam. The next linguist to propose a homeland was American linguist Isidore Dian, who in the 1960s concluded that the Austronesian homeland was in Melanesia. However, growing linguistic research and archaeological findings in the Pacific throughout the 1970s and 1980s pointed to another direction entirely. During the mid-1980s, Robert Blust and Peter Bellwood independently published papers in the same issue of the journal Asian Perspectives, presenting their arguments that pointed to Taiwan as the probable homeland of Proto-Austronesian, the ancestral language from which all Austronesian languages are believed to have originated. The spread of Austronesian languages was hypothesized as a result of a human expansion of Austronesian speakers out of Taiwan. Within a few years, this idea became known to some as the bellwood Blues hypothesis, and later it evolved into what is now commonly referred to as the out-of-Taiwan hypothesis. Early critics of this new out-of-Taiwan hypothesis argued that Austronesian language origins and spread were local evolutionary developments through processes of diffusion, borrowing, and structured interaction across pre-existing indigenous populations that have inhabited island Southeast Asia and near Oceania for more than 40,000 years, rather than from a relatively recent expansion of Austronesian speakers out of Taiwan. However, since the introduction of the out of Taiwan hypothesis in the mid 1980s, a substantial body of research in the fields of linguistics, genetics, and archeology span has emerged, providing compelling evidence in support of the out of Taiwan model which has now become the prevailing and widely accepted theory regarding the homeland and dispersal of Austronesian languages. Today, the term Austronesian has expanded its scope beyond its original linguistic meaning to broadly refer to not only languages, but to shared ancestry, cultural traits, and historical connections of peoples in the Austronesian world spanning the past 6,000 years. This broader usage is reflected in terms such as Austronesian peoples, Austronesian societies, and Austronesian cultures. However, some scholars criticize the extension of Austronesian beyond a linguistic category, arguing that language does not necessarily align with genetics and culture. They point to the significant cultural and phenotypic diversity among the approximately 400 million Austronesian language speakers. For instance, it would be easy to visually distinguish individuals of Javanese, Fijian, and Tahitian origins based on their distinct appearances. Similarly, there are vast social, economic, cultural, and religious differences among Austronesian speakers, such as between urbanized Muslim Malays of Kuala Lumpur and atoll dwellers of the Caroline Islands. Yet pointing out the differences among modern Austronesian populations misses the crucial point. If according to the out of Taiwan model, Austronesian languages are considered to derive from an ancestral language, probably spoken on Taiwan something over 5,000 years ago, and spread throughout the world primarily by a human expansion, therefore Austronesian speakers must all be linked, albeit by diffused common ancestry. Furthermore, despite millennia of biological and cultural changes to the Austronesians, traces of the Austronesian heritage beyond linguistics can be identified. The expansion of Austronesian peoples is linked to the dispersion of mtDNA haplogroup B, specifically haplogroup B4A1, and its subsequent lineages across island Southeast Asia, Oceania, and even reaching Madagascar in the western region. 
notably the lineage known as haplogroup B4A1A1A, characterized by the Polynesian motif and its descendants, played a significant role in the Austronesian expansion throughout Oceania. Additionally, cultural traits commonly attributed to the shared Austronesian heritage that goes beyond language include use of outrigger canoes, stilt housing, tattooing, domestication of plants and animals, and distinctive art styles, among others. These cultural and genetic connections support the idea that Austronesian can function beyond a linguistic category, and why many scholars concerning Austronesian and Pacific studies, such as Robert Bluest and Peter Bellwood have at one point or another treated Austronesians as such. This is by no means saying that Austronesians are a modern ethnic group or that the 400 million Austronesian speakers living in 2023 are the same as the founding proto austronesian speakers of Taiwan more than 5,000 years ago. Rather, it highlights that modern Austronesian populations share a common linguistic, cultural, and biological heritage that has evolved and diversified across a vast geographical expanse. If you liked and enjoyed the video, consider supporting me on Patreon so I can continue to produce more Pacific Studies content. Like this video, subscribe to the channel, turn on all notifications, follow me on social media at Pulin Speaks, and a special Sidzus Masi to Patreon supporters Buti Un, Piblem Tiako, and Dylan Sablon. Sidzus Masi for watching, Guahusi Pulin and Pulin has spoken. Esta.